Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves, episode two. You're here with your editors in chief, myself, Tim Wilms, and I'm also joined by Sukith Fernando. Uh, today is our Tuesday review show where we discuss the week's news and events and inform our listeners about the latest battles against the enemies of freedom as part of our mission to break the chains of control. And of course, there is no shortage of topics to talk about this week, uh, isn't there, Sukith? Yeah, that's right, Tim, and hello, everyone. So today we will focus on the Adler shotgun debate, actually, which is quite interesting, I think. Um, and was it the? I think it's. I think it's correct to say that it was the biggest political debate this past week, Tim. Oh uh, yes, that's correct. It, see, it exploded on the onto the political scene in Australia, and it lasted the whole week, which was, I think, surprised everybody. Yeah, and. Um, I think that'll lead on to, in more general, lead on to a conversation regarding gun control in general as well. And our second topic will be about World War Three and you know the whole, the whole, the whole fears regarding how Russia and the United States might go into war again if Hillary Clinton is elected. Uh, get your bomb um, shelters ready. Yeah, and our. Third topic will be about the election in general, but we will focus on the third presidential debate, which happened last week. Um, and we did our truth meter about the third debate as well, and we will focus on that. Um, yeah, and then we will wrap up. Yep, so let, uh, let's give a bit of background about the the Adler shotgun debate last week. So th this stemmed from uh, Liberal Democrat Senator David Linehelm. Uh, last year, he, uh, in negotiations with uh, Immigration Minister Peter Dutton and Justice Minister Michael Keenan, he got them to agree to a uh, one-year uh, one sunset clause uh, on the ban of the importation of the the seven uh, the seven shots Adler. Sh Adler shotgun in return for uh, f opposing a Labor amendment to the Migration Act. So this was while Tony Abbott was still Prime Minister, and although Tony Abbott denied that oh, there was there was ever a deal, uh, most people uh, suspect that you know a, a deal with a crossbencher wouldn't have been made without the the full knowledge of the Prime Minister or his office, and. Uh, after uh, after the the one year uh, one, uh, one year ban was over, it was extended. So Linehelm naturally was unhappy about it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, it occurred during the uh, the period where the Senate was in limbo. So the, I think okay. they were counting on that Linehelm wasn't going to well, wasn't going to get reelected, and so they thought yeah, they yeah, that's true. Just get away with uh, extending this ban, but. Uh, uh, David Linehelm did get re-elected and he <laughs> his vote to pass their uh, Australian Building and Construction Commission uh, uh, legislation, which was what they had the double dissolution ele election over. So it's pretty important to them. And so he's basic he basically said to them, well, uh, you've, uh, you know, you need my vote to, you know, get get this key piece of legislation through um yeah but what about you know you've screwed me over over this uh over this uh, adler shotgun ban so i want you to to revisit it and of course for some reason the the adler, the adler which is a lever action shotgun which is one of the it's pretty much one of the sort of weakest uh, well um, old-fashioned firearms that there is, um, but uh, for, because it, uh, people who've never fired a gun, when that uh, because it looks scary to them, um, and it's a new <laughs> gun, they uh, they think, oh, we've got to ban it. Yeah, and um, I have seen lots of newspaper columns where people are complaining about the actual gun. And um, my friend who lives in Belgium actually sent me a picture of a column from an Australian newspaper um, where people are like, they're happy, it's banned, you know, we don't, we don't need to import it here, which I found quite pathetic, really. Yeah, I mean, you can get a higher, 
higher capacity uh, firearms, some which uh, 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 fire uh, t uh, ten, 10 shots. So uh, the way that... Um, uh, I guess we should explain because it's quite because it's quite complicated the way that um, it is it is yeah the, the way that uh, firearms legislation works in Australia. So there's different categories of firearms uh, as part of the National Firearms Agreement, which John Howard set up in 1996 after uh, Port Arthur, which uh, heavily restricted. Um, the ability of, of law-abiding citizens to obtain firearms. So category A and B are the least restrictive categories. And because this, uh, the Adler is only a uh, lever action shotgun, uh, logic would say that it belongs in, in category A, which is the least restrictive. Um, yeah, but because, you know, the gun look scary to people who don't know anything about guns. They want to put it in category C or D, which means it's it's much harder for ordinary ordinary citizens to get. Yeah, and we did talk about we did talk a bit about the issue in one of your articles recently, and you did mention the categories. So does that mean that people want to keep it in C or D, but they want to who wants to who wants to like keep it in A and B? Well, uh, the uh, uh, firearm owners and David Linehan want it kept in in category A, category A where it where it should okay. be. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, because uh, the reason why um, they're opposing this uh, well, this is such a big issue for firearm firearm owners is because it's it's just if if it gets put in another category then it's another it's another restriction on yeah, on on the on the right of people to to use use firearms in Australia because what about yeah. the next um, uh, the the next new gun that's released are they going to just ban any new guns from getting from uh, from being available yeah i mean do, and don't they, don't they care about people wanting to defend themselves as well because they are so um adamant in wanting to bring refugees into our country and therefore risking our safety but when we want to bring in a, an item to defend ourselves it becomes a whole big you know problem for them well apparently this uh adler shotgun at all uh, even though it can only uh yeah f uh, fire uh, uh, s uh s seven, seven bullets apparently that's going to magically create a whole bunch of a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of mass murderers. Uh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're just going to, you know, well, I, well, I was perfectly fine before, but hey, there's this shotgun now. Like, I'm going to turn psycho now. Like, it just makes no <laughs> sense. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. And I hear that there are some liberal MPs who do support moving it to category B or moving or preventing it from being below category B. Like Ian, good enough, I think. Yeah. So, there, uh, so what, what's happened this week in uh, uh, what happened last week in Australian politics? I should say is that Labor seized upon this, uh, uh, on this, or oh, the uh, alleged deal. Well, it, well, it wasn't a deal, and said that you know, um, uh, you know, made a big song and dance, saying Malcolm Turnbull <laughs> wants to water down uh, John Howard's tough gun laws. This is, you know, so. <laughs> And um, of course, you know, Turnbull was, you know, oh, we, you know, we're we're not going to, you know, uh, allow this uh, shotgun into Australia. Yeah, and so, and so really, really was uh, defensive. And then Tony Abbott decided to thought he could embarrass uh, yes. Turnbull and said, he oh, did, yes, yeah, we, uh, you know, oh, I can't believe that there there would be such a trade off between. Uh, gun laws and uh, and uh, the ABCC bill, which uh, he was, which really um, was a stupid move by Abbott because it was, yeah. yeah, because he was the one who made the original deal when he was prime minister to uh, uh, to tr uh, to limit the ban to one year. Of uh, uh, so, so, they, uh, so Lineham would reject the Labor amendment to the uh, Migration Act. Yeah, and Tony, well, Tony supporters are mainly conservative, 
And yeah. with, he, with him, you know, using this sort of rhetoric and trying to sort of score some points, as you said in your article, it, it kind of, I think, it puts his place in risk as well because he's sort of moving, moving away from his conservative base. So, Yeah, um, and it, yeah, and it was good that there were or some nationals and even liberal MPs who who you know stood up and said no. Um, yeah, we you know the, uh, this uh, this seven um, seven shot shotgun. We we do need it. Uh, you know, farmers farmers need it when when hunting feral animals because you know people who have never had anything to do with. With with firearms, they 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 don't understand like why they needed. Yeah, I know that was exactly the problem in in one of those columns that my friend sent me. So my friend from Belgium, he sent me a, a picture, and it said, you know, it was it was full of all these inner inner city young dwellers who just who were saying things like, why do farmers need this? You know, don't. Do, why do they? They're just questioning why farmers needed guns. I mean, you don't know nothing about what farmers need. So yeah. why would you comment on it? And and, le and let's be clear okay. that the people who want the Adler shotgun ban, they would they would like all guns to be banned from from citizens. Yeah. It's, yeah. Exactly. It's, just, it's it's very it's quite regressive. Really. Yeah. I mean, you know, they they obviously they know that they can't. Uh, pr uh, politically do that, but they want to, you know, make sure they restrict firearms as much as, um, uh, as as much as they're politically able to do. Yeah, and the thing is, what scares me is that it feels like most people in our generation seem to want to support banning these guns. Well, because they, uh, be, because we've never really had a hi uh, uh, history of like uh, mass shootings, and we hear um, a lot about like, mass shootings that go on with America, they believe that the gun laws yeah. have, have, you know, uh, made us safer. So the, yeah. the laws have made uh, have made people feel feel safe. And yeah, I think course, laws are about you know feeling rather than the actual reality. Yeah, for them. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, I think it's a case where it's a it's a classic example of how they're using correlates cor correlation as a causation sort of thing. Yeah. And we're uh, yeah, uh, and we're also seeing like uh, you know things like home invasion and and gun crime itself in Australia are on the rise. And we are. So, we are. Yeah. And so you know these you know gun laws which are supposedly the um, uh, which are supposedly the you know model for the rest of the world we're starting to see them fall apart i mean uh, there, uh, we keep hearing in the news about this epidemic of illegal firearms being imported <laughs> in, into australia and uh, we're seeing in cities well especially melbourne um, you know home invasions by the apex gangs and of course yes you're not exactly actually yeah to keep anything in your house for for self defense yeah i think it just goes to show that the criminals will always have access to guns no matter what. Like we saw with the Sydney siege, the um, man Monis, he, he had guns, he was a criminal. The gun laws didn't prevent it. And we have all other terrorist attacks like in Parramatta where- Yeah, that, that was kid... an illegal gun. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, it's, it just doesn't, gun control just doesn't work. You know, criminals can still have access to guns. Yeah. and. Yeah, and it's it, it, when when you think about it logically, it's uh, as if a like a criminal or a um, uh, you know person who wants to commit a mass shooting, if they're saying, well, the only thing that's preventing me is that oh, there's this law against uh, certain guns, like they're yeah. already planning to break the law. I don't think they're going exactly, to exactly. I mean, uh, they're ultimately they're criminals after all. I mean, they will break the law anyway. So I'm pretty sure breaking the gun laws is nothing for them compared to their ultimate goal. And yeah, all the, the gun control advocates, they say, oh, well, look at, you know, what goes on in America. But what they don't uh, don't look at is that the safer cities in America are the ones with uh, the highest levels of gun ownership and the, yeah. the most dangerous ones, like Chicago, they have the strictest gun control. They, they do, the yes. Country. They do. Um, actually, Donald Trump um, actually mentioned that, didn't he, in the debate? 
Yeah. He mentioned that that um, Chicago actually has such gun laws, but if you look at it, Chicago has the worst gun crimes in America. Hope you do. Yeah. So, I, I think it was uh, uh, to, uh, to summarize uh, the the past week. I think it was. Um, I, I think it was uh, good that um, guns were actually uh, debated in Australian politics rather than yeah. it just being dismissed. And there were um, some some government backbench, backbenchers who said, "No, this uh, this gun is actually uh, ne- needed in Australia." And it was also good that Lionel was willing to you know stand up on this issue uh, as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy he's standing up for the, the libertarian cause. We, we we need him to do that. Mm. And I mean, there there was even um, uh, Paul Murray, uh, one of the media commentators on Sky News. It was good that he actually yeah. stood up for the firearm owners as well. So even though it looks like the seven seven shot uh, Adler will will not be allowed into Australia, I mean, at least we didn't have a completely one sided uh, com- conversation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So that's the gun debate, I suppose. So now we'll go on yeah. to uh, well, the other side of the world. Well, our next topic involves, uh, or the whole world, it's it's the potential um, uh, war with with Russia, which is hardly getting any mainstream attention. I mean, all the media seems to be focused on at the moment is, uh, you know, if Trump said something mean or... Yeah, um, Trump, Trump you know, takes. Which, uh, which, uh, which woman's claim that, you know, she was broke by him. Exactly. Um, and by the way, those claims have been debunked. So, you know, but they continue to focus on those claims instead of focusing on the real issues. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, so basically, what uh, uh, the the war in Syria risks turning into uh, a confrontation between the U.S. and Russia because Russia uh, wants wants to start Assad to to stay in power because basically Russia, you know, they don't want Syria to be taken over by um, ISIS. So they've been, yeah. um, you know, bombing ISIS targets. Uh, the, uh, the U.S. they're their, their main foreign policy objective was for Assad to Assad to go and have a oh, so-called uh, moderates take take over, which is yeah, I'm sure that's really going to happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure ISIS is moderate according to them. Yeah, and and, and so um, uh, uh, nobody's really been. In, being paying any attention to Hillary's uh, rhetoric during this campaign, she wants uh, uh, a no-fly zone over Syria. Which, although it, although it sounds like it, it doesn't sound very threatening, doesn't it? A no-fly zone. It doesn't. At first, I was like, "Well, it doesn't sound that bad, you know, a no-fly zone." Okay, but the thing is, when you think about it, if Russia somehow violates it, yeah, um, accidentally or who knows, but if they violate it, then it means Things are going to get really crazy. It means. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if the US shut de- started shooting down Russian jets, I mean, things yeah. would spiral out. Um, exactly. Uh, spiral out pretty quickly. And, and also, I mean, yeah. Russia did fly planes over Turkey anyway, so I don't think Russia is really scared much because I think Russia has the it has the sort of the guts to like fly its planes anywhere it wants you know it's, re- it's not really scared about the, the united states yeah uh, and it's uh, and of course the uh, the the media propaganda it's basically i mean we're we're seeing daily the media show um uh, vi- uh footage of aleppo in ruin so they're really trying to uh you know in the in the western in the western media uh, they're really trying to, you know, get the public in the mood for, you know, we've got to intervene. This is, you know, humanitarian crisis, and it's and it's interesting though that, um, you know, the the anti-war left who thought that, you know, Iraq was was, uh, you know, a disaster and U.S. should never have gone, uh, you know, saying, oh, we need, you know, intervention in in Syria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny how the non-interventionists have now become the interventionists. And now, who, the interventionists have become the non, the non-interventionists. Yeah, well, 
Oh, well, the, the neocons, they're uh, neoconservatives. They're, they're, yeah. They're, um, oh, they're world, always world view, interventionist, I think. Hasn't changed, and we yeah, forget. yeah, I suppose. Hillary is a, is, a neo, is a neocon. I mean, she voted for the Iraq War. And of oh, course, she did, she did, didn't she? Yeah. She, she was one of the chief cheerleaders of the, um, of the US intervention in, in Libya. Uh, which which is oh, yes. so well, and of course yeah. I encourage anyone to, to look up the the famous footage of Hillary um, in a, in a in an interview where she talked about the death of uh, the Libyan leader Gaddafi, and of course she said we came, we saw, he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's that's quite interesting for her to say, you know. I wouldn't expect her to say that, but we all know that she's flip-flopped a lot and she probably hides her true self right now. And of course, the, the, uh, Russia is the, uh, the, the, chief, the chief enemy of the neocons, neocons at the moment. I mean, the neocons yeah. have always wanted the US to be the... Um, uh, the the shape, superpower. Yeah, the, yeah, the superpower yeah. and the the influencer of world affairs and to um, uh, mold the world in their image. And so they, you know, they don't like the fact that that Russia is um, taking such a prominent role in the the Middle East. Yeah, yeah, and recently Putin, Putin actually made the mainstream news by saying that. If people vote for Hillary, there will be World War Three. So he told people to vote for Trump because he said there will be a World War Three if Hillary becomes president. And I think that sort of made this whole topic into a big sort of um, media, um, well, sometimes sensationalized thing these days. I think. Yeah, because Trump, Trump said, you know, why do we need to get into a, confront, a confrontation yeah. you know, with Russia? I mean, why do we need to, yeah. um, you know, be involved, you know, in Syrian regime change? And he's also um, questioned why is it any of the U.S.'s business, you know, for example, what happens in Ukraine? I mean, Ukraine's in Europe. That's nowhere near the U.S. Yeah, exactly. And he's right because it's not our place to intervene in other countries like that. I mean, I understand it may be a dictatorship, but that's how it is. You know, it's a different country, it's a different place. Democracy is a Western thing. So it's, I think it's, it is very aggressive. It's harmful to try and impose a Western system to a different culture. Well, yeah, well, you know, obviously democracy is, is probably the, the best system in the world, but you know the the naivety that we we uh, that the US can just impose it yeah, exactly on yeah is, is ludicrous yeah. yeah because it ends up undermining the whole concept of democracy in the first place I mean uh, you know, uh, uh, that was what the Iraq invasion was premised on that all we yeah do is just uh, remove Saddam and then this Western democracy will will magically emerge and all of these, uh, you know, ethnic and religious conflicts, they'll just, you know, completely disappear. Yeah, like and, and here we are now. And it's also uh, the, the um, another reason why a confrontation with Russia is likely under a, a Clinton presidency is the fact that yeah. they're, they're, bla uh, they're blaming Russia for all these WikiLeaks emails. Oh, yes, that was a big hot topic. That was a hot topic in the debate um, because um, Clinton said that Russia was actually funding William Assange. Well, it doesn't matter who is funding him. Julian because... Assange. Sorry, did I say William? Yeah. <laughs> Julian Assange. Yeah, sorry. Um, but, well, quite frankly, it doesn't matter. She's just, she's just trying to change the topic but from the actually important topic because she knows that Julian Assange is ruining everything for her. Yeah. So um, I think, yeah, so she's just trying to move the focus away from her crimes and just move the focus into Russia and then make things even worse. Uh, well, yeah, well, she's... Uh, she, she's basically uh, called the the the, Wiki, the release of the WikiLeaks email. She's blamed Russia and said that it's a it's a cyber cyber attack, and we should treat uh, cyber attacks the same as military attacks. And so, and so she said that there'll be you know severe um, yeah military and uh, economic 
uh, and diplomatic consequences, you know, yeah. for these leaks if she if if she is elected, and and uh, Joe Biden, the current vice president, has said, you know, we're going to take action against Russia for, um, well, well, uh, well, they claim that this is Russia trying to influence the U.S. election, and so, and claiming that it, Russia's intervening in in U in U.S. democracy. Yeah, and. Um, do you agree, though? Like, you did say that cyber attacks should be taken the same way as other physical attacks. Do you agree with that? Well, well, well. First, first of all, we don't we don't know if Russia is actually behind these uh, behind these leaks. But we also like a cyber attack is when you um, you know cause cause damage to the internet, like, you know, spread a virus yeah. or something or, you know, hack people's personal information. I mean, this is, this is just, um, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager's emails. And so, yeah, I, I, it's, you know, our, our lives are, are not affected by it. Yeah, and the thing is, even if Russia did fund Julian Assange and did fund WikiLeaks, I think it's quite shameful how the enemy, I'm using the, the quote, the quotation marks, it's interesting how the enemy sort of has to reveal the truth while the actual person from our country, or well, from the US, isn't re revealing the truth. I think it's quite interesting. I think it's quite pathetic, really. Yeah. And, and those WikiLeaks uh, emails, they've revealed some quite, um, yeah, scary truths about, you know, what the Clinton campaign has been up to. Yeah, it has. It has. Um, I mean, we know that she did underpay. She underpaid her female employees. We know that um, using the WikiLeaks emails by, was it $112,000 on average? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think it's, well, I, I mean, I understand why she's trying to move the focus away because if people found out that female employees, the highest paid female employees were paid $112,000 less, then it's going to be really bad for her. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, she's yeah trying to deflect as as much attention from them as possible, saying, oh, yeah. you know what, you know what, what I said, you know, which contra uh, which contradicts what I say publicly. Oh, that's not the issue. It's like it's yeah. the Russians and exactly you know, gotta, uh, watch out for those you know evil evil Russians. Yeah, and instead of and ultimately, she's not doing she's not doing her job properly. She's keeping things secret and it takes yeah. Russia to reveal the truth. Yeah, and can you really blame Russia for... Like, of course they want, like, uh, Trump to win. Like, if you... If you if you Like, because Trump's saying, you know, he wants to get along with, with Putin. Like, wh like, why wouldn't Russia, you know, wa want to... Uh, want the candidate to win who's, who's going to have better relations with them? That is completely right, yes. Putin wants to cooperate with the United States and take down terrorism. Mm. But Clinton is undermining that. And if she's elected, she will undermine that and she will make things worse. But Donald, he wants to work with Russia. He, sa he said he's not his best friend, but he said he wants to work with Russia, that yeah. it'll be good if Russia would cooperate with the US. And because it'll be easier to take down ISIS that way. And in the, the second debate, um, yeah, Trump was willing to um, contradict his running mates uh, about saying, you know, no, we want to get along with, with Russia. So he is, um, yeah, completely going against what the, what the neocons want in terms of um, foreign policy with Russia. He is. And the thing is, it's, it's easier for him to sort of um, expose his opinions now because he's unshackled now. Because, you know, the um, Paul Ryan doesn't really have a big connection to him anymore. So I think it's easier for him to, like, just say his opinions about foreign policy, about his opinion towards Russia now, without being scared about the neoconservatives in his party. Yeah, oh, well, the neoconservatives have said they're, they're not going they're not, not to vote for him. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, so okay, well, in that case. said he's not going to vote for him. Uh, Kelly Ayotte said she's not going to vote for him. So, George Bush said he's not going to vote for him. Well, yeah, every, uh, yeah. most of the uh, like the people who were involved in the George W. Bush administration have all said they're voting yeah. for Hillary. Bill Crystal said he's voting for Hillary. I cannot, I cannot believe that. Like, they they are traitors, really. Yeah, well, it's 
Well, yeah, there's not really much difference between Republican neocons and Democrat neocons. I mean, the, I suppose, yeah, uh, yeah. Like one of the main Democrat neocons, uh, Diane Feinstein. I mean, she has the exact same foreign foreign policy as as John McCain. Okay, yeah. I mean, the thing is, ultimately, they, their goals are aligned because they mainly focus on foreign policy. I suppose. So, you know, it's not surprising that they have similar views and similar yeah. policies. And, you know, Russia is actually quite scared of uh, 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 the possibility of war with the United States. I mean, they've increased their, their DEFCON alert. Uh, they've had, um, you know, large military training exercises to yeah. in case there is a, nu- uh, uh, a nuclear showdown with America. And they've also asked that, um, you know, uh, Russians who've got family members abroad to, to bring them back to to Russia. Um, they they've moved um, ballistic missiles closer to the European border. So you know they're, they're yes, they have the possibility yeah. of war seriously. Like um, and, and also there was uh, Russia today. They got their bank accounts frozen in the UK. Oh yes, that made headlines. That did that made headlines. Yeah. Uh, R- Russia today, it's like it's it's actually if you want if you if you don't want you know pro pro war propaganda, it's actually a decent media source to go to. I love RT. Yeah, I use RT. I don't use any of the others anymore. I just use RT or Fox because I trust them and the Uncheckled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we will become as big as RT. Exactly. Day. Exactly. We will. We will. But we won't. Um, be, but we won't be. Uh, obviously not controlled by the Russian government, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be independent, as always. Always will be independent. Um, so I think... So we should move on, should we? I think. Yep. So... Um, we did talk about the debate a bit in the Russian section. Um, but our next topic is to do with the other parts of the debate. Um, and the debate happened last week. And we did our truth meter... Which you can find on our website, and we'll put it we in will our, our show, note, show notes page. Oh yes, we will. We will. Yeah. Uh, we, and... need, we need to. We need to start doing that. So in case, because a, a lot of in in this show we are talking about articles that we've written. So we'll make yeah. sure that we link to those um, uh, at the bottom of the the episode. Yeah, and um, we will leave Trump won at the end of the debate because. But we do believe that Hillary made some good points at times. Like, she made some strong points at times. But Trump did make the most logical sort of things, ultimately, in the debate. Well, well Hillary, her main strategy is to, like, uh, is to you know, hammer down, um, you know, that, you know, Trump, oh, you know, look at how he treats women and, like, he's uh, so, <laughs> so chauvinistic. That's, that's, what, that's what her strategy is boiled down to. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's hilarious because, you know, we know that her treatment of women isn't that good. I mean, we all know about the um, Bill Clinton scandal, how she tried to shut them, shut them down. And we know that she paid her own employees in the Clinton Foundation. She paid them much less than the males, which, you know, I think is, it's, hypocrit- it's, it's hypocritical. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, what Trump's been accused of uh, is nothing compared to, like, what Bill Clinton's done over the years. And exactly. How Hillary Clinton um, uh, made sure that uh, the women that Bill Clinton abused were, uh, were shut up. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm trying to look for some of the main things they said. Um, well, we had the usual immigration um Issue. So we had Trump saying how most of the problems in America are because of Hillary, and, are because of Hillary and Barack Obama, and you know the heroin problem is because of that duo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, um, Hillary is just uh, like ma- mainly her claims are just uh, regurgit- regurgitating the. Uh, the same lines that she's had throughout throughout all of the all of the campaign. Yeah, and I found it inter- I, I really found it interesting how Trump said um, Hillary won a wall in two thousand six, and that was true. She wanted a seven hundred mile wall in the southern border, 
and it was called the Secure Fence Act of 2006. There you go. She wanted a wall back then. Yeah, I, I've 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 listened to the audio of her saying, you know, she wants the border secured. Uh, just yes. like ten years ago, she said she was opposed to uh, gay marriage. Exactly. She has, she said many things. The gold standard. She said, um, she has said many things that she has changed her mind about th these days. Yeah. Um, and also, the probably the biggest uh, uh, the biggest talking point from the debate is that Trump wouldn't say that he would accept the election result. Yeah, uh, at the end, yeah, towards the end, he said that um, because he does. There is a big um, sort of controversy about the election rigging because the DNC has been found guilty of not guilty, but they've they been accused of um, rigging there's the pri there's evidence of rigging the primaries. Yeah. against Bernie. Yeah, we, we know that uh, you know, Hillary was greatly favoured by the, the DNC, thanks to, of course, WikiLeaks again, exposing the, the DNC yeah. internal emails. Yeah, and, exactly. And of course, we already knew most of that because all the superdelegates uh, were voting for Hillary. Yeah. And, but yeah, I think it's, it'll be really scary if the actual election is rigged against Trump because, you know, well, that... there, it's interesting that, uh, you know, that uh, all, all the media are saying like, oh, how can you possibly, uh, you know, qu uh, quest question the result? I mean, oh, you know, you should just, you know, accept it. And uh, Trump's point is, well, you know, if there's evidence of, you know, like voter fraud, then, you know, shouldn't I have the right to contest the result? Like, isn't that reasonable? And of course, yeah, everyone forgets yeah. that Al Gore contested uh, the result in Florida in 2000. Yeah, and, and um, I think it's it's quite reasonable if Trump does that. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we're not, uh, let's not forget that there was an actual election that was presidential election that was rigged in American history. The the 1960 um, uh, presidential election was was rigged. Um, Nixon should have uh, beaten John F. Kennedy, but mayor of Chicago at the time rigged, um, uh, uh, rigged, the booths, rigged the booths all around Chicago to give JFK Illinois, and uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson um, uh, rigged the, te uh, the Texas result to, to make sure that JFK won Texas as well, which, which, gave, which gave JFK the, the presidency. But um, uh, Nixon decided not to contest the result because he thought that it would be too damaging, too damaging to the the image of America for um, uh, for a presidential candidate to claim that the election was rigged. Yeah, and did that happen? Was that uh, was it when John F. Kennedy died? Was that just before that happened? That, yeah, that was when he won in nineteen sixty. Okay, so oh, oh wow, okay, oh yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah, Nixon. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's many historians now uh, do conclude that Nixon actually won. Uh, to, uh, Tom Woods wrote a chapter in his in his book uh, his book Politically Incorrect Guide to American History about how the election <laughs> was stolen from from Nixon. Okay, yeah, so, that's, yeah. Well, if he didn't win, he might be alive. Who knows? Yeah. So, so you know, it's not a crazy conspiracy theory that yeah, it's you know, not. It's ele not elections and, could be rigged. And Obama is really wrong when he says Trump should stop whining. Well, Trump isn't whining. This is a very serious issue. It has happened in the past. It can happen again. We know what happened in the DNC. So it's it's a very serious issue. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, uh, yeah, the Democrats have been exposed as hypocrites. I mean, there's that famous tweet from Elizabeth Warren saying, Washington's rigged. Oh, how can Trump claim that the election's rigged? Exactly. That was, on fa oh, that was all over my Facebook feed. Mm. That was hilarious. <laughs> and um, going back to immigration, Trump said in the debate that Obama actually deported 2.5 million people in 2000 or since 2009 and that turned out to be true yeah yeah because um he did act he did in fact deport 2.5 million people and again here we are <laughs> obama is speaking against trump michelle is speaking against trump but he or well, her husband deported 2.5 million people yeah I'm, uh, 
there's a, there's a lot of virtue signaling on the on this issue. Yeah, there is. Yeah, and the thing is, the left doesn't seem to sort of stay true to what they did in the past. No, I mean, uh, you know, we we talked about Hillary before changing changing her her positions. I mean, when exactly uh, when her husband Bill was first elected president, he was you know positioned himself as a as a centrist Democrat, but Hillary's running as you know a far left uh, far left progressive in this election. Yeah, I know. Yes, because she said um, the record says I have been progressive, but then. Afterwards, she said, um, "I have been called moderate or centre, yeah. and I plead guilty." She said that exactly. Yeah. So yeah. she she claims I, she's a friend of African Americans. Uh, <laughs> of course, you know, there's that video of her calling uh, black men super predators. Yes, yes, yes. There is. Yeah, there is. But no one cares yeah. <laughs> anymore. So um, yeah, yeah. It's, as for the oh, sorry, oh, you, were you going to say something? No, okay. Well, I was just going to say. I was going to say that um, as for the rigging, well, actually, not not rigging. As for the elections, um, we know that the polls are actually saying that Hillary might win. Yes. Yeah, so um, but the thing, the... what the thing is, the thing is actually now I have good news. That, that that's the bad news. The good news is that a professor who predicted um, five elect election results in the past. He thinks that there is an, there's actually an 87 percent chance of Trump winning. Yeah, I mean the the the, the poll aggregator that most people um, look at, and that's also the one that I look at, is the 538 predictor, which has okay. uh, Hillary with an 86 percent chance of winning, which is uh, which in terms of vote, it's 49 percent Hillary, 43 percent Trump, um, and 5 percent Gary Johnson. But yeah, okay. I, I think it's definitely not over yet. I mean, of course, oh, it's saw, not. It's we not. saw with the British election result, uh, the pollsters got it wrong, and they also got it wrong with with Brexit as well. So they I, did, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not. It's not over until it's over. Exactly. I mean, there's always a chance. You know, people just people just need to go out and vote. That's what they need to do. You know, there's always a chance of yeah. winning. Yeah, and we have to also, uh, you know. Uh, uh, look at the fact that the media is just so biased against Trump. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean that the fact that um, you know they're you know suddenly finding three weeks out from the election, you know, all these women, you know, saying that you know Trump Trump touched them. <laughs> I mean, thirty five years afterwards, yeah. they say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think people, most people, know that the media is just full of biased, sensationalized stories that have nothing well, to do with well, reality. That's why Trump set up his own um, uh, election analysis on Facebook. He did. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, so the, yeah. So, mainstream media is, yeah, their their inf their influence is is dying, but sadly, it is. Uh, they're still the most influential. Yeah, and hopefully, it keeps dying, and or, or rather, it keeps dying, or it, it becomes it becomes correct. You know. Yeah. So yeah, so it's well, it's two weeks from today the election. Or, yeah. Or we'll, we'll find out the results uh, Wednesday. I think we're, uh, yeah yeah we, uh, Wednesday the um, where are we Wednesday the ninth ninth yeah yeah so that's when that's when we'll find out and it's also it's also interest uh, be interesting who who wins control of the the Senate. Oh yeah, that's a different issue, isn't it? Yeah, because that's what I wrote about um, yeah. la last week. That uh, uh, because the Supreme Court is such an imp important issue, and the the Senate confirms the presidential Supreme Court nominee, who controls the Senate, that will that uh, that will likely have a have a big influence on the future of America as well. It will. It will. Yes. Yeah. So, so does that mean that because in in America, do they have Two chambers. Yeah, so they have. House, so House of yeah. Representatives and the Senate. Yeah, Senate. Yeah, yeah. and the thing is, um, the Senate could still have more Democrats than Republicans. Yeah, the Senate's a lot closer yeah. than uh, on the five thirty eight. This is the five thirty eight average again. The Senate will be a lot closer. It could actually be split fifty fifty in that situation. Okay. The, the vice president would have a tiebreaker vote. So yeah, that, okay, that, okay. that'll be 
that'll be an important outcome as well. So if Hillary wins, um, if Hillary won the the presidency and Democrats won the Senate, that would be the worst case scenario. Because then, Hillary, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look like it looks like the Republicans will still win the House. So it doesn't look like she'd be able to do really radical things like um, yeah, crack down on the the Second Amendment and um, yes. introduce you know comprehensive immigration reform or let in more Syrian refugees. Almost, it's a 500% increase she wants. Yeah, which is very scary. That's scary. That is the most concerning thing there is. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to the end yeah. of uh, Tuesday's, Tuesday's episode. Um, yeah. There's, there's still, yeah, like we said, still two weeks left of the election. Um, so I'm sure we'll talk about it if, and talk about it again next week and the week after. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, and it's, uh, we'll also, we'd also like to announce that the show is now available to subscribe on uh, iTunes. And also today we just got it approved on uh, Stitcher. So now you can listen to us on the go and in your car. So that's very yeah. exciting. <laughs> so please join us again on Thursday for our interview episode. We hope that uh, we can um, re release that this week. We've still not finalised a guest, but I promise that'll be an informative episode. Yeah, thanks everyone, and I hope you all have a good day. Yep, so goodbye for now, and we'll see you again soon, and thanks for listening again. Bye. Bye-bye.